Greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St. Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton, and we're here today in the worship space. In this video, we are again delving into some of the themes of Tom Wright's book, God and the Pandemic, a Christian reflection on the coronavirus and its aftermath. And the theme of this video gets right to the heart of things from a Christian perspective. We talk about the place of the man from Nazareth, Jesus, as we reflect on our understanding of God and suffering, God and the pandemic. You might remember that last week in these videos, we looked at what we can learn from the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, when it comes to uh, responding to difficult times. And one of the key takeaway learnings from that uh, reflection was the importance about being honest with ourselves, honest with God and honest with others about how we're traveling. So now as we move into a pr time of prayer, let's be honest with God. Let's share with God how we're really feeling as we travel through these times. Now the prayer I'm about to use is based on a prayer by Christine Jarrett. Take a few moments to prepare yourself to pray. Breathe in and out gently. Let all the things that are buzzing around in your head settle down for a few moments. Let go of those plans you are, you've got sort of sitting there for lunch or what you're going to do in the garden this afternoon. Just breathe in and out slowly. And become aware of the fact that you, that we, are in the presence of the Holy One, the loving God who comes to us in Jesus. Let's pray. Loving God, we encounter you as you really are in your Son, in Jesus. And through him, we discover the extent of your grace and your compassion. Come to us with your healing and peace. Deal with all the things we struggle with deep inside. Help us to embrace the good news that in Jesus you meet us with a love that will never let us go. That in Jesus you utter words of mercy and forgiveness that override our hurts and heal our brokenness. That in Jesus you offer new beginnings where we had only expected dead ends. We give you thanks and praise for the mystery of your suffering love that gives us life. We give you thanks and praise that you know our weakness, that you share in our tears and that you hear our prayers. We give you thanks and praise that all our dying and living is held in your good keeping. In you, O Lord, all is indeed grace. All is gracious gift. We give you thanks and praise as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've reached a section of Tom Wright's book in which his focus is on what we learn from Jesus when it comes to responding to the pandemic, when it comes to responding to suffering. Wright says, and I'm quoting him, that when it comes to applying the Bible to great and disturbing events of our time, the New Testament insists that we put Jesus at the centre of the picture and work outwards from there. End of quote. Tom Wright picks up in doing that, in focusing on Jesus, on a number of important related threads, particularly emphasising that, that in Jesus we see the way of God is not just a, a thing for the future, but something for the here and now. In the short time I have to share with you in today's video, I want to hone in on that event, which is so central to coming to terms with God and suffering. The confronting truth that the one Christian's name is Christ, as son of God, died. Died on a Roman cross after being arrested, falsely tried and tortured. As Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, the good news that he proclaimed, that we proclaim, was all, is all to do with Jesus Christ 
and him crucified. A message that he said many find a stumbling block or foolishness. Listen now as we hear the account of the crucifixion of Jesus from Mark's Gospel. Perhaps just prepare yourself by pondering in your mind's eye the situation, the scene. Imagine yourself at the foot of the cross and consider what does this mean for me? What does this mean for the world? A reading from the Bible, the Gospel of Mark. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of Jews, and with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we might we may see and believe those who were crucified with him also taunted him when it was known darkness come over the whole land until three in the afternoon at three o'clock jesus cried out with a loud voice Eli, Eli, lima shabachtani, which means my god my god why have you forsaken me. When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and give it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last and the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom now when the centurion who stood facing him so that in this way he breathed his last he said truly this man was God's son Of course, the events of Good Friday are not the end of the story. Three days later, there is Easter Sunday. Death does not have the last word. God raises Jesus from the dead. But that does not mean that we can treat Good Friday as though it is a minor halt on a long train journey. How profound, how discombobulating, how amazing is it that the one we Christians claim as Lord of all should die. As Jesus made clear to his disciples James and John, and we can read about this in Mark chapter 10, when they wanted to be his seconds in command in God's new kingdom, in fact, as Jesus said, the greatest in God's kingdom the greatest in God's take on things is not the one who exercises power through fear, brute force, threat, bossing or bullying, but the one who serves. And in Jesus on the cross, we see this taken to the ultimate extreme. Out of love for us all and indeed for all creation, he gave his life in service. Now that's actually a breathtaking thing to say. The Romans of Jesus' day could never believe that the way of God, the way of a God for them, was through service. For them and to many others before and since, might was, is right. And as we think about the implications of the cross when it comes to suffering, when it comes to the pandemic, 
This makes clear to me where God is when people suffer. When we look up at the cross in our mind's eye, or perhaps look at a cross on the wall of a a hospital room, we are confronted with the reality that the true God is the God who is right there in the midst of suffering. As some of you may have heard me saying over and over again during these days, this means that God is right there in the COVID-19 intensive care wards, sharing in the isolation and the pain of the patients, sharing also along with the brave and vulnerable people who are caring for them. And if we go back to scripture, we see this resonates through a, a number of occasions described for us. As Jesus on one occasion wept on hearing of the death of his friend Lazarus, God is right there sharing the fears of those who have lost loved ones through this terrible time of plague. And as Jesus on the night before his crucifixion washed his disciples' feet as an act of service and love, God is with those who tend the sick, who comfort the sorrow. There are so many caricatures of God in our culture. You know, you've seen those cartoons of God as a sort of a king in the skies, sitting on the clouds, or God as kind of a wispy force. Yet it is in Jesus, it is on the cross, that we see the true nature of God. One who is prepared to suffer for us and with us. Through Jesus, we come to know God as a God of compassion which literally means God is the one who suffers with. Compassion suffers with. I'd like to conclude this short reflection by telling you about a recently published book by an English writer and thinker, Tom Holland. Now, Tom Holland, I think he would describe himself as an agnostic, which which adds some weight to the force of his argument. The book is called Dominion, The Making of the Western Mind, I have to say I haven't read it and I know it's very long. But um, as I understand it, through this book, Holland argues that what we see as good in our Western culture stems directly from the things we've been talking about this morning, from Christianity. The valuing of others, the importance of serving others, the rights of the human person, those things that are upheld in Western culture, Tom Holland argues, stem from Christianity, in other words, stem from Jesus. The way of God, friends, is the way of Jesus. It is the way of compassion. It is the way of true love. And as it turns out, according to Paul, love is indeed the most excellent way. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you bless us in so many ways. We praise for you the beauty of creation, for the wonder of spring, for bud and flower, for the song of the magpie. But most of all, we praise you that you come to us in the person of Jesus, the crucified and risen one. Compassionate God, we are lost for words when we consider the cross of Christ, the extent of your love made clear on Calvary. We give thanks that through the cross we know you share in the worst that this life can bring. We celebrate and pray for the witness of your church through the world in all its color, diversity, and difference. We hold before you those who have been wounded by life, all who suffer because of hardships, illness, injury, unkindness, or abuse. We pray for all who work in caring professions, for the service which seek to soothe and heal the sickness of body, mind, or spirit. In these difficult times, 
when we can hardly bring ourselves to watch the news. We pray for our country and the world, particularly remembering before you places of conflict, confession, operation, poverty, hunger, and theorists. Help us to be some way a part of the answer to this prayer. We give thanks for and remember the people who have encouraged us in your way, particularly holding before you those who now share in the great cloud of witness, the saints in light. And we offer this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. ای hey, پدر آسمانی ما، نام تو مقدس باد، پادشاهی تو بیاید، اراده تو همانطور که در آسمان اجرا می شود، در زمین نیز اجرا شود. نان روزانه ما را امروز به ما بده، خطاهای ما را ببخش، چنان که ما نیز خطاکاران خود را می بخشی. ما را در وسوسه ها می آورد، بلکه ما را از شریر رهاییده، زیرا پادشاهی و قدرت و جلال، تا عبد الاباد از آن توست آمین As we conclude this service I want to share some words of mission which uh, I've used a number of times in these videos and I've often used uh, and in worship gatherings and I think they reflect uh, what we've been talking about this morning Friends go forth into the world in peace Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you all, both now and always. Friends, go in peace.